Hi, my name is Dr. Andrew Dixon, and I'm one of the managing editors for Radiopedia.org. And today I'm going to talk about something which I, I don't think has ever been discussed at a scientific meeting, and that is YouTube and radiology education. And in particular, I'm going to talk about our experience with the Radiology Channel. The Radiology Channel is uh, free and available on YouTube. We don't run any ads on our channel, and therefore I have no financial disclosures to make. So we've been producing video content for the channel for almost exactly 12 months now. And on your screen you can just see a few clips of the uh, topics that we've covered in the 12 months and some of the graphic illustrations we've used to really enhance the educational experience. Before we begin our, our discussion, I'm going to ask a little quiz question. Which do you think is the peak age group for people watching radiology tutorials on YouTube? Is it the 18 to 24 year olds? Is it 35 to 44 year olds? Is it the 55s and over? Or is it somewhere in between? So in this talk I'm going to try and cover three different areas. We're going to look at some survey results to see what people actually think about radiology education on YouTube. We're going to look at some of our video statistics to see how people actually act. And then I'm going to, to discuss why I think this is important for radiologists. So back in March of this year we conducted a survey online over a very short 72 hour period and we used our social media network to gather these responses. We therefore have a significant selection bias in that respondents are already engaged to some degree in online radiology education. However this audience is our target audience and so their opinions are obviously important. So over the three days we had uh, 576 people fill out our survey, of which 132 were radiology residents or registrars, 118 were radiologists, and the vast majority of the remaining individuals also had careers which involved some knowledge of radiology. In fact, there were only a few people who completed the survey that you would describe as being a layperson. For the purposes of this presentation, we're going to group the residents and the radiologists into one group called radiologists and everybody else into a group called non-radiologists. So we asked four different statements to see how strongly our survey respondents agreed. YouTube is an appropriate platform for online radiology video tutorials. YouTube can be useful for radiology learning and continuing education. YouTube video tutorials can be more useful than traditional tutorials. Modern video resolution and streaming capabilities are adequate for online radiology education. And here are the results. We found that the vast majority of people, 98 and 97 percent, agreed that YouTube can be useful in radiology education and that it is an appropriate platform. We also found that a very large number of people thought that the modern video resolution is adequate. Interestingly, we actually found that 80% of people believed that video tutorials can be more useful than traditional tutorials, and we didn't find any difference between the uh, radiologists and non-radiologists with these questions. We then asked what length of video tutorial do you think is ideal, and in both groups, radiologists and non-radiologists, we found that 5 to 10 minutes was the ideal length. We did, however, find that radiologists were more likely than non-radiologists to select greater than 20 minutes as an option. We also found a disconnect between this 5 to 10 minute preference and the actual behaviour of people on the channel. You can see here our acute ischemic stroke video which goes for around 7 minutes compared to our acute appendicitis on CT video which goes for around 2.5 minutes. And this line tells you how many people or what percentage of people are watching at any point in time. And you can see for the stroke video after 44 seconds almost 40% of people are no longer watching the video tutorial as opposed to a similar time point in the acute appendicitis video only 10% of the audience has dropped off. And I think this is really related to the length of the video. If somebody starts watching a tutorial and they see that it goes for 7 minutes they're less likely to complete the video than if it is a short less than 5 minute video. Which do you feel are true of YouTube radiology tutorials compared to traditional tutorials? We allowed our respondents to select as many or as few from this list here. And really we identified that accessibility and the low cost or the free nature of YouTube are the real driving forces behind people using that medium. So now we're going to look at some of the statistics from our channel. And as I said earlier, we've been going for almost exactly 12 months. We have produced 23 videos in that time with 130,000 video views and 290,000 minutes of video streamed. We've uh, gained 5,500 subscribers with a like ratio of around 99%, which compares extremely well when referenced against other channels on YouTube. 
This shows the growth in estimated minutes watched per month on our channel and you can see back in March for instance we were getting around 20,000 video minutes viewed per month and that's now climbed up to 66,000 minutes per month which really equates to one if not two people watching a video at any point in time. Same has been happening with our subscriber growth. Here's statistics for um, people watching our videos based on YouTube searches or Google searches and I, I guess this is important because you know, a lot of people may ask why would you put radiology videos on YouTube rather than somewhere else on the internet and the answer is you don't need to find your audience on YouTube, your audience will find you. All they need to do is search for a term and hopefully they'll come across our videos and certainly that's what we're seeing in these statistics here. Time for our quiz question answer and I think quite a few of you will be surprised that the answer is 45 to 54 years of age. Certainly you might expect the YouTube generation which is probably down this end of the age spectrum to predominate. However what we're seeing here is that our videos are really being used for continuing education amongst people who are already well into their career, probably radiologists and other health professionals who need to know more about radiology or keep up to date with the latest information. Our top three countries are the United States, India and Australia and you can see here that two-thirds of our audience are male and one-third female. So finally why do I think this is important for radiologists? Well YouTube is inevitably and increasingly going to be used for online radiology education. I think the statistics we're presented here today and the factors of accessibility and cost mean that it is only going to increase in the future. However, YouTube is not peer-reviewed and anyone can produce any video they want and quality is far from assured. And so the same reasons that make YouTube a useful environment for radiology education also make it the perfect environment for misinformation. As a professional group, I think radiologists need to embrace the benefits and the challenges posed by YouTube. We must ensure, as radiologists, that we are producing high-quality content and that we're making it available for free, not only to enhance the teaching of our students and peers, but also to mitigate the potential harms of poor quality videos. And let me assure you, there are a lot of poor quality radiology videos already in existence on YouTube. This is our goal with the Radiology Channel, and it's our challenge that we set to the Radiology Academia to get involved.